Hello, and welcome to Surveyor Says, the podcast from the National Society of Professional Surveyors. Each week, we bring you fascinating guests that are involved in the profession of surveying. We cover a lot of ground, including Table Lay Talk with Gary Kent, Point of Order with the NSPS Joint Government Affairs Team, Future Focus, highlighting current and future leaders of the profession, and everything survey-related in between. Thanks for joining us here on the podcast, and hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of Surveyor Says. Welcome to Surveyor Says. I'm Kurt Sumner, Executive Director of NSPS and your host today. Hope everyone is having a great day. And I know that my guest today is having a great day because he always has a great day. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Bob Akins is with me today and we're going to have a conversation with Bob about a number of things. One of which is the fact that he is one of our candidates for vice president in the upcoming election for NSPS leadership. So welcome Bob to the podcast and also thank you for agreeing to be a candidate for our uh, upcoming election for vice president. Thank you for having me on here. You and I have known each other for a couple of days. Um, of course, when we get to be our age, maybe we don't remember exactly when we got together. We just know it wasn't yesterday. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that That's the, the uh, nice thing about a long relationship. If you can't remember when it started, it's been a good one. That's been a good one, yeah. Because you, you came on back in the governor days, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, I went through that whole transition period. That was an interesting educational experience. Yeah, it was. Um, going from the, the structure that we did have there for such a long time. And then, of course, every I think everybody listening probably understands that the transition was made when we began the joint membership program. And it was important for our state affiliates, who are our partners, to have a vote in the final decision making process, not just from an advisory perspective. And um, I don't know what your thoughts on that, but I, I think it strengthened us as an organization and and got people to actually feel as though being invested, so to speak. I think the, the old structure was actually like a crutch. It did not give us the ability to participate as representatives from the states to the to the full strength of our, our abilities. We had uh, the ability to uh, come up with answers to problems and make recommendations, but the, the process following that, the approval was not left up to us. It went to the board of directors, and I think that was a, a flaw in the system, and now it's been corrected, and, and I think it works out very well. Yeah, and honestly, I, I don't recall what precipitated the original concept, honestly. Um, it was it was in place when I came along back in the late 80s. Um, and of course, at that time, we had ACSM as the lead organization for you know the member groups. So I, I, I don't have an explanation of why we started out that way, but certainly going to where we are now was a, was a good move. Absolutely. So I know you've been involved in so many things uh, in your tenure and being part of of NSPS leadership, and you've had some pet projects along the way. I, I might maybe that's a good idea or a good explanation or, or phrase, perhaps. But uh, one of the things that we always hope happens with our 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 leadership team, whether it be officers or or directors in particular, because they're representing their state at that point. But that's one of the things we always hope for is that people attach themselves to whatever issues that may come along that they have a specific interest in. And that doesn't always happen, but it's always good when it does. And the one that that comes to mind right away, of course, with you is the one with the, the railroad issue that we've had for years and years and years. And um, I'd like to say we got all that solved and everything's working perfectly the way we wanted to, but uh, that we not aren't quite. there yet. But uh, not quite. I, I know that's been important to you, so may, maybe you can talk about that a little bit. Well, 
when I first started uh, under the old system as a governor from Ohio, uh, I remember a gentleman, I think his name was Warren Ward from Colorado, was doing and trying to get something going on railroad monumentation in the abandonment process. Well, nothing ever happened. Uh, Warren um, ceased to be the director, governor then, and it kind of fell to the wayside. And in this time period, I had to reestablish a railroad right away uh, that two farmers had bought 40 years ago or whatever. And their estates were trying to get settled up. They were both elderly. And uh, they had to split this railroad that they bought jointly. So I went down and tried to reestablish this right of way. And, and it took a heck of a lot of work. And we had to go a couple of miles either direction because much of the, well, the infrastructure was completely gone. And much of the uh, right of way had actually been graded off and, and was back into farm fields. So you didn't have any idea where it was actually at. And uh, in this process, it uh, was very time consuming and very expensive to the client. And I thought that this is this just isn't fair to the uh, the property owners that abut that right away to put the uh, financial burden on them to establish that railroad. And upon that, and then I got a phone call one day and um, was asked if I would. Uh, take over the chairmanship and try to do something with that committee. And so I agreed to do that and uh, and a couple other people helped and we we came to a point where we had the verbiage of what we wanted to ask the railroads to do upon the abandonment of it and taking uh, for them to monument that rail in some fashion. It could be just run a GPS receiver up there and, and take uh, numerous observations every so many feet or whatever. And, and then establish that with the county, the county that uh, you're in, multiple counties if necessary. And that would be on like the state plane coordinate system that you would know where that railroad was. And part of that request was to have the vow maps put on file with the county engineer's office that the information would be turned over to. And that's pretty much where we stand today. We're trying to find the vehicle to get this into practice in some fashion. And uh, we talk about legislation um, and there's like transportation bills. This infrastructure bill might have been a good uh, possibility had we had the uh, the infrastructure and everything the ready to go. If we could get it in, and we didn't get it in in time, and um, but then it was recommended to us to look at possibly getting it in as a regulation through the Surface Transportation Board. And so these are a couple of the avenues that we're looking for uh, to get this in place. And uh, I'm very hopeful. I'm, I'm one of those guys, uh, if this door closes, then let's go through the window or something else. Just get it done in some fashion and get it into practice. The, one of the biggest problems we have is that the railroads are immune from a lot of government regulation. They were given those immunities back in the 1800s when the government wanted the railroad to get across the country and connect the east with the west. And so they gave a lot of exemptions to these railroads and they are still in existence today. So that's a big hurdle for us to get over. Yeah, I, the, the challenge of course goes back a really, really long time. Um, if my memory is correct, we were talking this before anybody even thought about GPS coming along. It's, yeah, it's been, yeah. been going on all that long. And I can recall, like you were talking about coming up with different ways to make it, for lack of a better term, easier for them. So um, they might capitulate a, a little bit. And, uh, you know, one of the ideas was once GPS came along, we'll just 
put the GPS unit in the on the, on the train and let it collect data as it goes along. And I don't know if that would have actually worked, but that's one of the things that that came about. But I do remember before that working on railroads and still, I guess that's probably still true today, just looking for any clue you can find that would help you find evidence on the ground that would support what the map showed or what the right where you know where the right of way ought, ought to be. Uh, there was a an abutment for an, for a bridge that had a station number yep, on it, yep. you know, that kind of thing. Yes, <laughs> that's absolutely right. And the, the thing about the vowel maps is they they're difficult to come to gather up sometimes. Uh, the railroads seem to have the opinion that they will have um, more liability or that it will expose them to additional liability. But uh, my, my thought processes don't work that way. I think that it would be in their best interest to have the, for us to have those maps so that we can get the railroad at the proper width and in the proper location. I think that's, I don't understand why they wouldn't want that. But we don't think like some other uh, entities. Right. And, and it's like anything else, I think, in life. Um, if somebody's in a position where it's not actually hurting them at this point in time, uh, they're less sensitive to, to your concerns. And, and yeah, it seems they, like that's where they are. Yeah, the the railroads, when they're abandoning a line, they don't want to do any and spend any more money than they have to because it's already a loser. So I think that's the way they look at it also. Yeah, I think that's probably true too. But you know, you've you've been around like a lot of us for uh, a, a long time. Anything else come to mind that, of course, in your tenure, we we got through the joint membership program, a lot of other things, but anything else come to mind that, that was something you really, really wanted to work on and hopefully we got somewhere with it? You know, we try a lot of different things. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. So. What I find um, today, and it's very intriguing, and it's a, it's a heck of a challenge, is the membership, the numbers, because it's a declining population, and with that declining population, you know that's going to affect your revenues and your ability to operate. So I, I think that is probably one of the most critical problems we have, if not the most critical problem. And we've got to uh, uh, break that nut loose and make it work. And it, it's it's something that's going to take probably a decade. Once we get a handle on it, it's going to take at least a decade to get these new surveyors through the pipeline and into the practicing field. Right. So we've we've got to just um, do what try anything. And I was attended there in Chicago. I attended a, the membership meeting there, and there was a lot of good ideas uh, thrown out there. There must have been 40 or 50 people in that meeting, and a lot of ideas came through. Uh, and I'm I'm hopeful that um, some of this stuff can uh, come to maturity and and get the get the wheels turning on this cart. Do you think? And I was obviously in Chicago as well, and I was I was very heartened by visiting with the young surveyors when they were meeting and just looking at those that there was probably 40 or 50 of them there and their enthusiasm and and it sort of heartened me, gave me gave me some hope that uh, moving along, we will will really have that strong leadership from from our next generation. At the same time, I think everybody's concerned about numbers uh, or you know, what, what are our numbers actually going to be going forward in terms of people who become professional surveyors? Uh, a lot of people think we don't need as many anymore. And I don't know if that's true or not, but some people do feel that way. But um, certainly the need for the profession won't go away. And that's one of the things that I think we have to push um, into the minds of whoever comes along um, through the schools or, or whatever way we can get them there. So I don't know. It's a challenge. I, I wish I had all the answers, but I don't. I'm too old to have all the answers, I guess. But Well, the the problem is that if you 
you have these young surveyors and, and it's a great group that we have there. And, but they, they think and they work differently than we did like 50 years ago. And, and one of the, the things that we've lost, I think one of the best recruiting tools we lost was the fact that we no longer have three and four man survey crews. Because a lot of surveyors, myself included, I actually wanted to be a civil engineer and was uh, accepted at the University of Cincinnati here in Ohio. And, and then I got invited to a, a fracas in Southeast Asia. But the, uh, <laughs> but the um, once I, I took surveying in the Army and once I got into it, and then when I came home and stayed in it while I was doing some additional engineering studies, and then um, I realized I loved what I was doing. And I was actually disappointed in engineering. I didn't go for all the, the meticulous stuff as material strengths and things like that there. I just didn't grasp that easily. And I thought, I'm, I'm gonna stay where, where I'm at. I get the, uh, the historical value in the surveying industry. I love the history part. You've gone back maybe 150, 200 years in a deep search uh, to find a, where the real answer is. And that part is, is great. And then the numbers, I work well with numbers and uh, it, it's, it's always a challenge to figure it out. Once, it, once it's figured out, I'll let somebody draw it up. <laughs> but no, I, I like uh, the young surveyors, and, and a lot of this was brought out at that meeting in our, um, I conducted a um, strategic plan meeting at the, uh, there in Chicago, and I asked for suggestions uh, of what, how we could, what we, where we wanted to go from here. And several of the comments from the, the directors was in regard to the young surveyors of getting them more and more and more involved. And I think that's wise to a point that we don't want to throw, throw the whole house at them. Let them in one room at a time and, and let them grow along with us and give us advice. I think they, they think and, and uh, operate on a different level than we did. And still, they're into the social media so much. And that was one of the biggest points that was brought out. Uh, I know we've tried some of the social media um, venues to, to recruit new people and so forth. But um, that's, I think that's where the answer lies. And these young surveyors are the ones that are going to show us the way, without a doubt. Absolutely. It's, it's, um, I guess the, the term I would use is it's just natural in, in their knowledge base and the way they do things, the way a lot of things were natural to you and me when, when we were coming along that may have been new to the people ahead of us. Um, but, but you're so right. I think that getting them involved is, is the key, um, to make sure we're moving in the direction we need to on all levels to still be a viable profession and, and one that people want to be a part of. When I came back from that meeting and I was at a, uh, here in Ohio, we have to, have, you know, 15 hours of continuing education. We hadn't had much of an opportunity uh, this year, but we had a, a, a two day session of classes in Columbus uh, or Dayton about a month or so ago. And at that meeting, I was sitting at a lunch table with a couple young surveyors and the one and it, it just so happened that one of our past presidents was at that table also and he was a young guy and he had been in charge of the young surveyors and uh and he felt he was getting too old to be a young surveyor anymore <laughs> so there was another young fellow sitting there and, and he was very impressive he was uh, very knowledgeable and and he acted like he was he's very mature in the profession and uh he agreed to step up and take over that group and i was i was really happy about that so uh but it's got it 
you got the, the thing about it is it's like anything in any organization you got to have those lead people in the right places and if you got that then you're going to see movement in a positive direction and uh, so you, it's just like trying to get sometimes you try to encourage the directors to take all this information back to their states and share it make sure it gets piped down through the system and if it, if the director's not doing his job then that state isn't getting fed and i think it's a very important and it's it's a critical responsibility of us as directors well i'm not a director anymore but as directors they they have that responsibility and get it down the line and certainly from our leadership um the leadership team the officership that obviously true there too yeah i'll tell you uh trying to explain i have people come up to me every once in a while what do we get from nsps for our 50 dollars and i says you don't know what you're getting no i don't know i says did you ever go on news and views just go in on that website and browse around and look at some of this stuff i says did you ever see a government affairs report well no and well then that's i bring i would bring that back to the state in my report i'd have a several page report and give that um government affairs report as part of my presentation and i i couldn't stress hard enough to get this down the line because i think the government affairs is probably worth every nickel of that 50 dollars without anything else we've got some good people there uh john bird is uh excellent his, his personality his demeanor his knowledge his recall yeah, it just astounded me uh, going, I, you know, on, on um, day at the, on Capitol Hill. And uh, I went with him a couple of different places and different times into meetings and so forth. Everybody in those offices knows him. So you know he's doing his job. And he knows who this guy is and who's on that committee and this other committee. And, and it's, it's very important to have a person like that at the forefront and he's the face that people see of us and he's doing a heck of a job yeah one of the things that has impressed me about jb all all through the time and it's gotten stronger as he's become more familiar with who we are but he's able to determine where there is an application related to us in the surveying profession in in a, a piece of legislation that's coming up uh, a bill to be passed or a uh, some sort of edict from an agency or whatever, he's able to figure out really quickly where there's a place for us to have a voice, where we might not have recognized that on our own, I think. I, and that's one of the things that that's so impressive about him. Yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's a heck of an individual. He certainly is. Well, I, I don't want to take up your whole day. I appreciate you joining me today and having an opportunity to talk to uh, to our audience and and let them know that what your interest is and and being part of our election process and so i don't know if you have any uh parting message you want to leave with our with our listeners or not but uh you're welcome to do so if you wish well mainly is that i truly believe that nsps is fulfilling the mission for us surveyors and i think that if if we go on down the road and lead in a proper fashion, we will be served well. Um, the, the whole situation uh, with the membership, the legislative, but, but there's so much going on there at NSPS. I'm a firm committed believer into the, the organization. And I, I just feel that's why I don't want to leave. And my, my um, directorship, was terminated because of uh, term limitations that we have here in Ohio. And I didn't want to quit. I told him, change the Constitution. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but 
like all things, that was a very good learning process for me and no meeting all these individuals and seeing how the whole operation works has been very valuable and I want to be a, a bigger part of it. That's, that's certainly a, a, a valid goal and, uh, and commendable. So thanks for being with me today and we'll uh, get into this election process here pretty soon and best of luck. All righty. Thank you, sir. Hope to talk to you soon, Bob. Thanks. Yep. Bye. Take care. Bye bye. You've been listening to the Surveyor Says podcast, brought to you by the National Society of Professional Surveyors. If you have any questions about today's episode or any other topic, please email us at info at nsps.us.com, and we are here to help. Visit our website, nsps.us.com, to learn more about our association, the programs we administer and support, our sustaining members, and information about future episodes of Surveyor Says. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify, as well as our podcast host, Podbean. And remember, it's a great day to be a surveyor.